And we made it. <laughs> Good work, guys. Probably finally got to the end of the crazy wrestling week ever. This is how I walk around now, because my body can't handle it. It's in a constant state of what news is gonna break, what news is gonna break, what news is gonna break. So I just wiggle. That doesn't even make any sense. Hello, my name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. And we do have two last shows in order to round off this seven to 10 day period. Of course, we are about to talk about Smack Down, but ups and downs for Rampage will also be live today. Please check them both out. Otherwise, my life is a complete waste of time. Let's up those downs for Smack Down. <laughs> We focused on the fact that Drew McIntyre got screwed out of the WWE title at Clash at the Castle, and I can't tell a lie. I really enjoyed that WWE did this, don't get me wrong. If McIntyre had had his moment, I'd have been blubbing like, oh, he did it, the Welsh hero. Something went awry there. But this just seems to make the narrative so much more damn interesting. I mean, what the hell are we gonna do with Roman Reigns? It's also turned Sola Sokoa into a massive heel. I mean, he's a mega asshole, and yes, we had it confirmed that Pat McAfee is gonna be away for a while because he is doing some football stuff. Now, that is great news for him, but it sucks for us. We kind of kept all the joy from that premium live event going too because our first match was the Brawling Brutes versus Imperium, and there was just so much to enjoy here that I glued my hands to my face. That's right, that's what I did, because I wanted to make sure I could only see the TV and I didn't want any distractions. It's like when you played Goldeneye back in the day on the Nintendo 64, you put that cardboard into like a four-way thing because some people would learn the levels and they would cheat. <laughs> that was me. I was also pleased to see that Giovanni Vinci is still there because they had this weird thing where all of a sudden I was like, oh man, maybe they just did it because it was a pay-per-view in the UK, but no, the three-man Imperium is back. And there was more goodness too because Butch continues to transition back into Pete Dunne, even though he's still Butch, but he's got his old clothes and he wears his hair long. Just makes all the sense in the world. This match also had an incredible atmosphere. I mean, people were so damn into it. And one of the main reasons for this was Seamus. Because I think what has happened is that he did get that mega evasion on Saturday. And it's just going to carry on. And this made me so damn pleased, so damn warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum. Because the Irishman deserves it. He has never got his due. He has never got his credit. He has been a constant for years. And finally we're going, oh, Seamus, you're the best. About time. All of this also meant that this was going to be an absolute war because I'm pretty sure beforehand all six guys had stood around and said, should we just go out there and kill each other? And they thought about it and they thought about it and they thought about it. And the answer was, yes, that sounds like a really good idea. Now, in many ways it wasn't, but in terms of your wrestling visual experience, damn good. The whole thing too was based around the fact that Gunther and Sheamus may be about to clash heads again so we teased it and nothing happened and we teased it and nothing happened and by the time they did start throwing bones, forget about it, the WWE Universe Hit your head when you say that went absolutely loopy. Butch was also going crazy over people's fingers because he loves doing that but this was stopped when Gunther found him and just went and slapped the absolute shib out of him and I shouldn't enjoy that it makes me a very depraved person. What are you gonna do? I did. Even when Vinci was beating up Butch for a while, all you could hear in the crowd was, we want Seamus and Gunther, give us those pancakes. So eventually we did get that at the end. But I want to make sure that everybody gets their due here. Cause whether it was the Brawling Brutes or whether it was Imperium, they just wanted to have the best damn match they could do. And do not forget either, this was the opening of Smackerdown and I was super duper pumped. You really do have to go and see when Seamus gets the hot dag too. Cause people react like they've just been told this secret of life. And then we got this really cool sequence because Seamus hit the bro kick and then Ludwig was here and he hit the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. But then Ridge Holland got in and he finished on Kaiser and Gunther went, hi, he was there too. And he gave him a big old chop. I was like, yes. Kaiser then took this horrible bump after this back body drop courtesy of Holland. I mean, somehow he landed on his knee and his leg just folded up like an accordion. So he, he is okay. And then of course the tag cracks and ha ah, went off. Everybody started to fight, although Seamus and Gunther got so carried away, they spilled outside the ring. Now this did cause somewhat of a fracas, which allowed Imperium to get back in control. 
They hit the Imperial Bomb onto Ridge Holland, and it was Vinci that got the cover. Now, I know some people are going, well, that isn't fair because Sheamus lost a Clash of the Castle, and I understand what you are saying, but if you don't watch NXT, and you're like, who the hell is this new guy in Imperium? He just scored a pinfall. Now he's got some moxie to him. We can continue this feud on, as far as I'm concerned, till Survivor Series. I am properly invested, and it is getting up. We then actually got a memorial graphic for Queen Elizabeth II, and I was like, hot damn, that shows how far that news has traveled, and I think this was very nice. When it was time to get back to business, and enhance and evolve the bloodline. Now it is a shame that Roman Reigns has gone away for a while because he would have added so much to this, but we did have the Usos, we did have Sami Zayn, and when those guys are together, I'm just having a really good old time. Sami Zayn especially, he's just really funny. Sami also came out dancing his ass off when they were in the ring and he started talking like a Uso. Jay looked at him as if he knew that Sami Zayn was sleeping with his wife, but he didn't have all the evidence, so all he could do was get really, really mad, and you can just feel it right in your heart, your heart. Eventually, Sami Zayn is gonna get bludgeoned, and we're all gonna feel terrible about it. The whole point, of course, was to introduce the newest member to the crew, and yes, you already know who that is, Twink the Clown. <laughs> it wasn't Doink the Clown, it was Sola Sokoa, but once again, WWE has become so smart recently, because as he was walking to the ring, what played, it was a video that said, hi, this is Sola Sokoa, he's a badass, and you should give a shit about him. He is so damn hated already, because everyone's like, that's the person that screwed over Drew McIntyre, and he basically got on the microphone, and was all like, oh man, bloodline, family, I'm all about my kids, whatever the hell he said, and I think that Drew McIntyre must have been pacing backstage saying, oh, if he says one more thing, I'm going to go out there. He did say one more thing. He told the audio guy to hit Drew McIntyre theme music.mp3, and out he came. Now, the coolest part was, even though that Sami Zayn and the Usos jumped out of the squared circle, do you know what the new guy did? He stood there and he was like, oh, Drew, you want to go? Well, let's go. Now, this was a terrible plan because he got twonked with a steel chair, but then when Drew McIntyre went for a second swing, who got in the way and took the shot instead? It was Sami Zayn. <laughs> Once again, my hearty heart bleeds. The bad guys then scarpered as Drew McIntyre yelled at Sola Sokoa, and Sola Sokoa yelled at Drew McIntyre, and the point is they will go at it at the main event. And look, I totally get it. We need Roman to be injected into this thing, or we just need a world championship on Raw or SmackDown. But WWE is doing best with the cards they do have. It is getting it up. And then I just got a little bit confused as to what we're doing with the tag team titles. And why? Well, because it was Raquel Rodriguez and Aaliyah defending their tag team championships against JC James and Gigi Dolan. And while that was quite good, because of course Toxic Attraction were taken out of the tournament because they got injured, they only got in the thing because of an injury. So why were we doing this again? And this wasn't bad or anything like that. It was an okay tag team match, but it just feels like we're biding our time until Sasha Banks and Naomi return. That means this just came a little bit across like filler. Otherwise, it still just feels like Aaliyah is useless to this team. And eventually Raquel goes, oh, fine, I'll do it. She comes in. She beats the crap out of everyone, gives them a power bomb, and just pins them for the one, two, three. And that's basically exactly what she did here. So what I would do is that when they do lose the championships, which could be on Monday, which is another problem here, because I sat watching the whole thing going, well, they're not going to be defeated because they have EO Sky and Dakota Kai in like three days time. But I would have Rodriguez go off the rails, be like, Ali, you were crap and didn't help us at all. Beat her up, go heal, do that program, and then do something else. So once again, it wasn't terrible or anything like that, but I just didn't see where on earth this was going to go. Getting it down. And then, in what has to be the biggest wink, wink, nudge, nudge thing that WWE has done in ages, we had a little catch up of everything between Ronda Rousey and Adam Pearce when we cut to Michael Cole who said, well, there's an internal investigation going on that may last a matter of weeks. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. And if you do, <laughs> shots fired. Despite all these apparent upcoming punishments as well, we then learned that Ronda Rousey was not only going to be in a match, but it was a number one contender fight. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Who is right in the rules? It was also a five-way because she was taking on Lacey Evans, Zia Lee, Natalia, and Sonya Deville. Although I will tell you what I liked about this. Clearly, somebody has gone, right, we need to turn Ronda Rousey into a superhero again. Why don't we book her in a five-way? She can just kick everybody's ass. And that's basically what we did, because she was essentially a freight train that had a flamethrower, which means nobody could do anything. And this didn't go that long at all. It was about five minutes. So in around 30 seconds, she locked Natalia in the armbar. 
that he tapped out. We then had a double elimination because Ronda did the same to Lacey as Sonya Deville also locked on a choke on Xia Lee. So then we were down to two. <laughs> but seriously, I've been quite excited about something between Sonya Deville and Ronda Rousey. But Ronda just looked at her, applied the ankle lock, Sonya Deville. Down. So it is now Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey at Extreme Rules and Liv was watching on and she did that thing. As soon as Ronda had won, she held up her belt as if to say, I'm the champion, I'm the champion. Yes, we know you're the champion, Liv. It's been made quite apparent. I do like Unstoppable Ronda Rousey. I don't know why, it just gets me going. Up. However, I am going to give a down for the bizarre return of Lacey Evans. Because we haven't seen her in weeks. Nobody had told us anything. There hasn't been a peep. And here she just walked out, healed it up to the crowd. She like mooned somebody in the audience. And then she just got beat. Do you remember all those awesome vignettes we were doing earlier in the year? This has been completely dropped on the floor. That's why it's getting it down. We then went straight to the bloodline backstage who were actually quite happy here, especially Sokoa, because he was like Sami Zayn. Thank you so much for saving me. I love you. And I tell you, this made Jay Uso so mad, and I think he just got to the point where he's going to be pissed off regardless. Like, Sami Zayn could walk through a door, and he could hold that door open, and Jimmy Uso would go through first, and Jay would stand there and go, well, that's not very nice. Why don't he do it for me? Of course, you can just feel that the bad times are coming, and then we also had a very interesting eyebrow raising sketch because Ronda Rousey was in the back as well and she bumped into Shayna Baszler. And Shayna Baszler was all like, oh, well done, Ronda, you've done it. You are the woman now. And Ronda was all like, yeah, well, you screwed up at that premium live event. So when you're ready to take over the show and break some bones, why don't you come and have a conversation with me? So just let them do this on screen. I don't care if it turns into a feud. I don't care if it turns into a tag team. I don't care if they turn into tiddlywink buddies. There is so much history and so much past between these two. We should be telling that story. And it's been like five years and we haven't told that damn story. So I'm sick of it now. That's not true. I'm not sick of it. I don't even care if WWE doesn't want to do this. But the point remains... They should. We then did get this big eight-man tag that WWE has been alluding for for a while because it was the Street Profits teaming up with Hit Row to take on the Maximum Male Models and Los Lotharios. Now, I cannot lie, I knew there was going to be a little bit of goofy wrestling here and I got that when Mansoir and Marseille hit some kind of a move and they were like on the other side of the opponent they just dropped and they turned to the camera and the camera zoomed out and they were being all like, oh man, we're models. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you don't like it. It makes me so damn happy. The best part of all of this though is when we got the hot tag to Angelo Dawkins because 2022 has just been this guy's year because he went absolutely nuts to the point, if you're one of these schmoes out there going, oh man, when the Street Profits broke up, Angelo Dawkins is going to be the Marty Jannetty of the team. Take a bar of soap and wash your mouth out that is not true at all. Both of them are gonna be able to fly. He also hit this crazy dive to prove he can do anything. And then we kind of got a little bit of a tete de tete between Maxine Dupree and B Fab, which is when Max Dupree also got involved. And then basically bat in the ring, hit row, hit the heavy hitter, and they got the one, two, three. I mean, it was a little bit just like that. And look, I've no idea if that's the end of all of this or we are gonna carry it on. But it was fine, it was fun, it was entertaining, it was enjoyable, and the fans in the arena really liked it. I mean, much more than I was expecting. So you could take or leave this, I totally understand it, but I am gonna give it an up. It's like 10 minutes of okay. And then Braun Strowman was on SmackDown, and he destroyed more tag teams. What is going on? But out came the Alpha Academy, Chad Gable and Otis, and they were like, we hate being here in this hometown, and we also hate the monster among men, because we think he stinks of cheese. And of course, Braun heard this. We got the raw. <laughs> he came to the ring, and he killed him. I mean, Otis and Gable did get a few shots in there, but after Chad had been powerbombed, Braun actually was also able to give the same move to Otis. Now, I cannot lie, I am a simple man. When he did do that, I was like, ah, oh, he powerbombed the big guy. And once again, given how excited people were to see Braun Strowman, I couldn't help but be taken up within it too. This is getting it up. But unless Nicholas is about to come back to reteam with Braun, why have we spent two shows ensuring that he just decimates the tag team division? Anyone could have been in this role, anyone could have done this job, and it would have got exactly the same reaction. So I just don't get it. And this didn't have the same wow factor as Monday, because of course Braun had already told us, oh, I'm going to SmackDown. That's how we talk, he just shouts at you constantly. So in that sense, 
I am going to give it a down, and that's mostly because I love Alpha Academy. I love them so much, and I want them to have more of this, or more than this, I should say. But I just don't think they're going to get it. In case you cared too, Braun actually has new entrance music, and it's like his old theme, but whoever composed this new one was listening to the Doom soundtrack beforehand. And let me tell you straight, there is nothing wrong with that. We had a quick interview too with Drew McIntyre, who was all like, oh man, I'm gonna kick that Solar Sokoa's ass, which meant it was time for our main event. <laughs> And it ended in disqualification. Now, we do have to caveat this, because ever since Triple H has taken over, I'm pretty sure we've actually had more clean finishes than we have had shenanigans. Now, that makes me glad I retired those counters, because I would have egg on my face right now, and I'd, go, and I'd eat it because I love egg. But the point is this. If you do hold off the nonsense, the nonsense actually means something. So because we had been holding off the nonsense, we got to the end of this match, we got some nonsense, and I went, hey-ho, why not? Sokoa also looked great during this thing, and he was kind of dry. Drew McIntyre's equal to certain parts, although of course the Usos and Sami Zayn were at ringside and they were just casting mega distraction because of course when you get into a group you increase your MP. I mean all of them including Solar really did beat up the Scottish Warrior for a while but I think we must not have seen Drew get a phoenix down out of his pocket and go because all of a sudden he got back to his feet and he went absolutely crazy. He was doing belly to belly suplexes, he was doing to net breakers, and then he was going, bah, because of course he wanted to hit the claymore. He also would have done this mad dive if Sammy hadn't grabbed his foot, and this got so out of control, all of a sudden the street prophets were here to beat up the bloodline. So I don't know whether that means anything, so I'm pretty sure there was a stipulation that they were never allowed to challenge the tag team tiles again. But I won't lie, I can't remember. And actually, what this was doing was opening the door for absolute craziness, because all of a sudden Drew McIntyre was in the ring. He Claymore kicks Sokoa, who landed to the outside, when the screen went all black and white like somebody was directing my first horror flick. Karrion Cross was then here. He locked in the cross jacket on Drew McIntyre. This meant the referee had to cause for the DQ, but SmackDown went off air with Karrion being like, no, no, I'm gonna choke him out forever, which means he was gonna kill him. So basically, we're now meant to think, well, Drew McIntyre is dead because nobody was going to save him. But as I've already pointed out, I thought this was a very good thing to do, mostly because now Drew can separate himself for everything with Roman Reigns and not look like an absolute numpty. He can have the feud with Karrion Cross that's been teased for ages. And while this presentation was a little bit goofy, why the hell not, man? Why not do something different? Although I have one question. Who in the back is working for Karrion Cross and Scarlet and went boop and hit the black and white button. But we actually used all of the wrestling tropes to tell a story here, which is the whole point of sports entertainment. I am giving it an up. Which brings us to the end of SmackDown, as has been the way over the last few weeks. It's just good television. It just is. I'm intrigued to see where we've gone. I want to know what's in the future. I have no idea when Roman Reigns is going to come back. We have extreme rules in like five weeks' time. But did I enjoy myself? Yes, I did. Up. Now please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's episode of Smackdown. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. And you know the deal. Whatculture.com, social media at WhatCulture, WWE and Simon316. Check out Rampage Ups and Downs, which will also be on the channel now or later, depending on when you're watching this. Then lay down. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely month, a lovely week, a lovely year. Remember to love yourself because you're a good person. And I will see you soon.